Um, in India, uh, malnutrition is, uh, is a very big issue. Uh, just to give you, give you an idea, um, there are about 120 million children less than five years of age in India, of which about 47% suffer from malnutrition. And about 38% of all malnourished children in the world live in India. So it is a very, very big issue for us. It's an issue not just for children in the less than uh, five years, but it is also an issue in uh, the older uh, ages as well. If I were to look at the segment between 15 and 49 years of age, for example, about 40% of all people in that age group also suffer from malnutrition. So uh, you've got a, um, you know, a vicious cycle of, uh, let's say, women who've got hemoglobin levels of between seven and eight, producing children who are born with very low levels of uh, hemoglobin and therefore um, you know, malnourished and therefore uh, that interferes or impedes with their growth and development. So one of the big, uh, uh, you know, big initiatives uh, really has to be how can public and private partnerships together with the government and NGOs come together to uh, address this problem because it is too large uh, to be addressed only by the private sector, only by the public sector, only by the government. And uh, I think the call for action is very, very critical. I think uh, several roles. For example, uh, let me talk about my company. We, uh, we are in the business of making uh, biscuits and bread and cakes. And uh, we took a decision uh, about a year and a half ago that we will make all our products more nutritious than they have ever been in the past. Uh, part of it was, uh, came out of the work that we did with GAIN. Part of it came from the work that we did for the UN as part of the World Food Program, where we were supplying you know, large quantities of biscuits under the World Food Program to the United Nations. So we asked ourselves this question, which is that if we can supply nutrient-added biscuits for the WFP, uh, what was coming in the way of adding nutrition to biscuits that we sold in India? And um, you know, certainly, um, you know, the purpose of business is really to serve the needs of the consumer, uh, as well as to serve the needs of the shareholder. So we needed to come up with a model that enabled us to do the right thing for the consumer, uh, as well as to do well for the business. And that led to the initiatives that we've got in place now, where we've made a decision to fortify uh, several of our brands. And we've also made a decision that we will not charge the consumer uh, extra for that, but we will, um, uh, you know, we will uh, actually cost that out on the basis of enhancing uh, productivity and other cost reduction programs which would actually then pay for the cost of nutrition that we were adding. Uh, so just get, to give you an idea, we sell about over four and a half to five billion packs of biscuits every year. And uh, we've decided that we are going to add nutrition to um, you know, all of the products that we sell. And we made a beginning with our largest brand called Tiger. We took it to our next largest brand called Milk Pickies, to a brand called Mari. We fortified bread. And uh, you know, so the intention is to add more healthy or nutrition values uh, to food that we sell, which is you know, cookies and biscuits, which uh, are quite enjoyable. Oh, this was a business decision. Uh, this was a business decision more than, uh, so it's not about uh, ticking off a box which is called CSR. And that is the reason why we spent a great deal of time trying to come up with a business model that was going to be sustainable. Uh, to come up with a business model that enabled us to produce good results for the shareholders of the company and at the same time provide healthy food uh, to the people of India. Um, and you know, just to give you a context and a reference for what we're talking about, uh, a pack of biscuits which contains about 14 to 15 biscuits to the consumer costs 8 cents. Um, and uh, there isn't any other product 
that comes anywhere close to it in terms of um, the hygiene, in terms of the nutritive value, in terms of you know the energy value uh, of our products, um, and in terms of the fact that these are products that can be consumed by anybody, anywhere, whether you're at home or traveling or in a bus or a subway. Um, so that's what makes the whole initiative very, very attractive from our point of view. Because uh, first of all, uh, it is the right thing to do. Uh, and I talk about it not just from a moral responsibility, but um, simply, you know, if you look at the economics of that, uh, you cannot have a country of a billion people out of which 200 million are malnourished. We cannot talk about a country where, um, you know, we are going to lead the knowledge economy, where we have large numbers of people um, who don't have good nutrition. So I think there is as much an economic reason as there is, uh, you know, uh, a moral reason for why it is important for a country like India to secure every child's right to uh, good food and good nourishment. Um, so to my mind, it is the coming together of uh, doing the right thing for the people and doing the right thing for the business. And as I said earlier, the issue is significant and profound enough for, um, for it to actually invite partnerships between private companies, NGOs, the government, because what you need is a model that can be scaled. What you need is a model that is accessible. What you need is a model that is affordable. The private industry can do what it knows how to do best. In our case, we know how to make biscuits that are fortified. We know how to make biscuits that taste good. We know how to deliver these biscuits to consumers, whether it is in urban India or rural India. And what we therefore need is the ability to scale this up, uh, where partnerships with the government and NGOs would be very useful in, um, in giving this critical mass. I think what GAIN um, has done, and I certainly believe what GAIN can continue to do even more than what GAIN has done so far, is to simply increase the saliency of malnutrition. Right now, it is my hypothesis and belief that uh, this subject does not deserve the kind of attention that it ought to deserve because in many ways it is almost asymptomatic. Um, you know, you can very tangibly point to somebody and say this child is suffering from diarrhea or this child or this adult is suffering from HIV AIDS. It's harder to say that about malnutrition. You know, you can certainly look at people and say they don't look very healthy, but you know, unless you do some tests, etc., you don't really know whether hemoglobin levels are 12 or 7 or 8 or whatever. So um, I do believe it's one of those things that everybody knows is kind of important, but the salience or the importance or the visibility or the conversation value that it generates is not as high as some of the other things which are far more, you know, easier to decipher and therefore far more tangible. And I think a unique role that GAIN can play, because that is the very essence of what GAIN is. I mean, that's what defines GAIN. You know, it is the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. You cannot improve nutrition without really improving the salience of nutrition, without improving people's understanding of what malnutrition can cause. And it is not a problem for this generation. It is a problem for generations to come. So I think that is the unique role that GAIN can play to increase the saliency, to increase the criticality, to bring large groups of people together to work cohesively to address this very, very fundamental issue.